This is the Man Up Podcast, the doctor's guide to men's health. Each week in our podcast, we interview the top specialists of the field on various topics in men's health. You have questions that you are too afraid to ask, we have the answers. This week, our episode is titled, Dealing with Erectile Dysfunction and Peyronie's Disease. I'm Dr. Kevin True, and I'm joined as always with my co-host, Dr. Justin Dubin. Justin, we got another great episode for our perspective series, don't we? Oh, we have a really good one today um, because we're going to be covering two subjects. You know, our our, our guest, Jack, who is anonymous, yep. um, you know, he came on and he was kind enough to uh, talk about his, his issues uh, dealing with erectile dysfunction as well as Peroni's disease. Um, and these, the, these things are sometimes go hand in hand together. Sometimes you can have one or the other, but as Kevin and I know, you know, erectile dysfunction, we know is very, very common, but right. Peroni's disease is way more common than we actually think because a lot of guys have been embarrassed for the last 10, 15, 20 years to talk about it. Talk about having a curvature of their penis, whether it was initially painful or was difficult to engage in intercourse um, with their partner. Um, and now guys are coming out and talking about it because of the fact we have a lot of great ways to treat it if needed. I think that's and, and that's something that we should kind of, you know, put out there because I think a lot of people may have heard like Peyronie's disease and may not really know what it is, but you know, in actuality, it's, you know, you have a curvature of the penis and we've seen it in all different types of curvatures, right? Justin, like mm -hmm. we've seen oh, yeah. it from, you know, a slight 20 degrees and we've seen it kind of, you know, it's facing the other way, you know? And it's so turn it inside <laughs> out. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, though, you know, we're, we're the docs that you kind of want to go see. And there are things that we can do to kind of straighten it back out. So I think this is a great episode because we really get a lot of, you know, Jack's mindset and just kind of like what he's thinking and what he's going through and uh, really gives us a good understanding of, you know, what you're going through and what to expect. Yeah, for sure. And just as an update, when, you know, when we recorded this, Jack was going through the process of getting a penile implant and somewhere down the line, we're going to have that talk with, with our listeners about the penile implant. Um, but he did get it done. He, he was kind enough to update us and he's very, very happy with, with the results. So, you know, one way or another, there are things we can do to treat your erections, to treat your curvature. Sometimes we got something that can treat both at the same time, which yeah, right, is pretty yeah. awesome. Um, but we also cho chose to put this episode out on this Monday because this is the week of a lot of conferences. Uh, yeah. Kevin and I, Kevin's going to both. Unfortunately, I can only go to one, but we have two conferences this week. Uh, Kevin, tell us about the first one. So the first one is called ASRM. It's uh, the uh, American Society of Reproductive Medicine. And basically, you know, a lot of thought leaders get together uh, from the field. A lot of REIs, IVF docs, as well as the male infertility docs, we all get together and basically just kind of go over all the kind of cutting edge research going out there. Uh, as you know, infertility is much of a, you know, technology that's still kind of moving forward. So really having a good understanding of where, what kind of research other people are doing really helps, you know, someone like me, if I hear some research going on across the country, the things that I can offer to patients that I see. Um, and then Justin, you can go on over the, you know, the conference in the second half of the week, which is also going to be great because I'm going to get to see you in person. It's going to be nice. Yes. It's been a while, you know? <laughs> yeah. So Kevin, the ASRM is actually close to Kevin. It's in yeah. California, Anaheim. Unfortunately, I can't make it, but I've gone to that conference several times. It's a fantastic conference. But then Kevin's coming over here to Miami where the SMS today, which is- the stomping grounds. To the old stomping grounds. The Sexual Medicine uh, Society of North America's conference and this is, you know, where the ASRM is all infertility, which is one, one half of what we do. The other half is the sexual medicine, um, which is, you know, the topic that, that we're talking about today on, on this uh, episode. And basically, in the same way, we have thought leaders around the country, around the world coming in, and we're talking about different as aspects of men's sexual health, women's sexual health, transgender sexual health, testosterone, erections you know, uh, female sexual dysfunction, all of these things are going to be discussed. 
And it's, it's always a great time to see everyone, to learn Absolutely. something. Um, and it'll be great to connect with Kevin again in person for the first time in a couple of months. Yeah. And what's going to be nice is I think, you know, Justin, we, we've been kind of planning out that weekend and we're, we're going to hopefully try to try some new stuff with the podcast there, maybe try a few live recordings. So we'll see how it goes. And, uh, you know, hope you listeners enjoy it. Um, kind of a new format that we kind of explore. So. Yeah, it's going to be cool. I hope it works out. We're going to figure it out. You know, we're planning some really fun interviews uh, in yeah. person. Hopefully the video, I, I don't, I'm not as worried about the audio, but hopefully we'll yeah. get some good video um, f- for this content. But it should definitely be really fun uh, with some new kinds of content for, for our listeners. And hopefully we'll try to make some content along the way as well. Um, but once again, I do want to really thank, you know, Jack for coming on to talk about this because like we said, it's a really sensitive topic that takes a lot of guts for someone to come on a podcast and to talk about. And, you know, there's a lot of value in these, these perspectives. You know, we've talked about cancer, we've talked about vasectomy, we've talked about a lot of patients with different experiences here. And this is just another thing that, guys have a lot of guys have they don't want to talk about but once they do talk about it they understand that there's ways that we can do something for you and um i think it's going to be great what do you think kev uh i think it's gonna be great Uh, that was really well said justin and uh you know i think we should just jump into the interview it's uh it's a really good one guys so i hope you guys enjoy it enjoy guys So we are very lucky uh, to be joined uh, by Jack, who's going to really share his story with us and kind of just, you know, kind of tell his story, his journey uh, about a lot of things that he's been, uh, you know, dealing with. Uh, So why don't we just start off? So, Jack, tell us a little bit about your story, which, as we noticed, started with erectile dysfunction. When did you notice you had ED? I said I realized I had ED and started to, to realize, uh, experience the symptoms in my early forties. Um, it, How the, old are you, Jack? really, I'm, I'm 49 now. Okay. okay. I'm 49. Um, in my late thirties, uh, I was diagnosed with adult onset type one diabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, and going through all of the diabetic counseling and all the all the jazz they put you through you know they talk about how diabetes is is hard on your heart and hard on your kidneys and bad for your eyes and uh, all this other stuff but nobody ever mentioned oh yeah by the way if you don't take care of your blood sugars uh this can affect the most important thing as far as most men are concerned and and that's your you know your your erectile function and uh you know it got into my 40s and to be honest with you i thought it was just well i'm I'm, I'm 40 now um and maybe this is something's going to happen and more and more research realized oh guess what diabetes is a you know big contributor to ed it wasn't something that i really it wasn't even on my really on my radar until well down the road. Yeah, listen, um, I think one of these things that's you're a hundred percent right. Like, guys, they think you know y- you can eat anything, you can deal with whatever, and you're still going to have good function. But you know, your health, your you know, sexual health is health. So your penis stops working because you got heart disease. Uh, your penis stops working because you got diabetes, and you're not taking control of it. Um, and, and you're right. Like, so this is something that can be a shock to a lot of guys and they never think about it because especially with something like diabetes and heart disease, it's, it's, you don't see it until you feel it for a long time after. Right. So continue. I'm sorry, bud. Oh, no, it's great. Um, you know, anyways, and I started, you know, starting experiencing it, it you, kind of the, the, the whole, uh, process of uh of mourning or you know denial no well i could take some vitamins or if i work out more or whatever else and and some of that helped for a while um you know you try the you know whatever you can find behind the counter at gnc you know they got locked up for all the men's health yeah, and, they, and yeah. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know the, the horny goat weed goat weed and, yeah, right. and, and all that jazz and uh yeah a little bit of help here and there but but really nothing 
uh, nothing long lasting as far as uh, you, you're not going to reverse it. It's it's nerve damage, it's blood flow stuff, and and with diabetes, it's just fight. That's wait, a fight for hard to wait, win. So, so Jack, so Jack, you, you you mentioned here you're you, you went to GNC. You're looking at all these you know stuff. So you hadn't approached the doctor at this point, right? Like a uh, neurologist or men's health doctor. You had just been trying to look for like kind of resources yourself yeah, to try yeah. to right, right. And uh, I'd also been kind of doing battle with some of the, some of my personal doctor for a while, and and even endocrinologist because because it was adult onset type one. Uh, I couldn't get a square answer at first. Okay, are my type one or am I type two? I right. don't fit the type right. two profile. I'm not overweight. Um, yep. I'm active. I've got a fairly decent diet. Um, and type one, you, you find that out when you're a kid. Uh, you know, yeah. like it's usually something. You know, and um, you're absolutely correct. And, and my so I, my my big thing was is a couple middle fingers to doctors said if you can't tell me if I'm type one or type two that I'm not. And until you figure this out, uh, you know, it, it, I'm going to be in denial, basically. Finally got an endocrinologist that was able to, 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 to figure. And that, it's what it was. It was just me being re rebelling from having doctors telling me, well, I'm not sure. Well, you're the doctor. Uh, help me figure this out. And I wasn't getting anywhere until I went to a, a local large university to their endocrinology department. And they were able to narrow down, okay, it's adult onset type one, your pancreas, for whatever reason, is, is eating itself alive, basically. Um, so I wasted a lot of time there, uh, being a, trying to rebel and, 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 and a little bit of denial there. Um, after that, and it was even a couple of years after that before I talked to a doctor about the ED. So we're talking um, years, you're saying years. You had the ED for years, you tried all this stuff, on your own but listen this is this is why we asked you on because this is every yeah. single dude that we talk about talk with every single dude they will try everything under the sun as long as they don't have to come and talk with their doctor right kev All right <laughs> yeah they just don't want to come in I, I, you know like it, it's it's tough when you don't really maybe know all the information or you're like you know do guys want to try to take care of things themselves yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. That's Guys being dudes. I want to, like, uh, we said this before. I'll say it again. Like, I'm opening up something. I'm not reading the instructions. I'm going to figure it out right. myself. <laughs> and then if I can't figure it out, then maybe I'll ask someone else. And that's the same oh, thing yeah. that guys do, right, with ED. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and really, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't debilitating. It was, you know, I was still able to you know, maybe 70%, okay. uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be able to get by. Um, and so, okay, well, let's just try to get back to, you know, a hundred percent. And some of those other little things did help, you know, they helped get, you know, that 70% back to 90% maybe until it didn't. Um, and then it was the conversation with the doctor was like, all right, I, you know, what I need some help here. Uh, and then we started with some oral meds and with great success. Now, let's just um, take a step back, though, because yep. I think one of the important things that I want to talk about is like how your ED affected you as a person. Right. Because, I mean, obviously we get we'll get to the treatment, but, you know, struggling with this, struggling with the other stuff you had going on. It's obviously a lot on you. Right. Like you I, like a lot of guys identify themselves about their ability to you know be a good partner and that's a part of your male identity and so like when you were having these issues before you got to the doctor and i'm sure still going through the doctor how did the, the getting or or you know coming to the realization that this was a real problem how did that affect you or, or make you think oh it's you know it, it's it's incredibly frustrating um it's flat out i mean it's depressing it um can absolutely just you know it it, it tears you down and i really gave i've been giving a lot of you know this a lot of thought and i mean i mean i mean counseling now for it and, you know and a lot of it around you know this aspect of it um but one of the things that i, I kind of came to on a drive to work one morning was that 
I had to look up. Okay, so what? What's the? How many times a day does your average guy think about sex? You know, on that there's that Ohio State study out there. I think they threw a number of like 19 times to it. Damn, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's an Ohio State study that says that they had people like click. Just is like underestimating. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought, I'm like, okay, uh, college students have changed. <laughs> Yeah. I'd have wore that clicker out, I'm telling you right now. Yeah. It'd have been like, hey, you need new batteries. Did you sit on the thing or something? Um, uh, but so, you know, we'll, even though Ohio State sucks, um, uh, <laughs> we'll go with this study. Um, but uh, 19 times, so we'll say 19 times. It, let's say you're awake for 16 hours a day to 19 hours a day. That's once an hour. Yeah. That. A healthy guy is thinking about sex, thinking, okay, who, you know, I can't wait to get laid again. My thought, and to this day, is when I think about sex, I think about my shit don't work. Right. Right. Or you're thinking you about know? how can I get my shit to work so that I right. can do it. Well, yeah. Right? Exactly. It's, 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 that's where your thought goes. It's not a happy thought. It's not an exciting thought. It's a depressing thought. It's, man, how am I going to deal with this? I got to deal with this. Um, so it, it, it can really quickly spiral into something incredibly negative, incredibly depressing. Um, you know, they talk about, you know, grumpy old man syndrome. Well, if shit don't work, you're a grumpy old man. It, it just is what it is. Um, and Dude, Jack, I mean, Jack, first off, just thanks for, like, sharing yeah. this. Because, you know, I, I know a lot of our listeners probably going through the same thing. 100%. You know, and they just... The same thought process is going through, you know. They're, you know, you're down. You're just like, yo, this, this, my shit ain't working, right? Right. How do I take it to, you know, how do I get this back? Um, and so, you know, I just thank you because this, this is, this is why we're doing this. We want to get this out that this is to normalize. You're not it. The These only are guy things that it's okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and that's why, and, and that's why I, I wanted to do this. I'm like, hey, this is an opportunity with some, a couple guys that, I think I can relate with and, and have a good conversation with and, and enjoy this conversation, but it needs to be heard. People, guys need to hear this, that God, you're not alone. Uh, you're not the only one. And there is, there's right ways and wrong ways to go about getting the help you need too. That's, that is also an excellent point. So, you know, we're now at this point where, you know, you, you think it's time to finally get some medical interventions with, with what's going on. Now, you go to the doctor. What doctor prescribes you Viagra or Cialis, or how do you how do you get these medications? So, went to medical doc. My family doctor got the prescriptions. You know, at the time, this was pre generic Cialis, pre generic okay. Viagra. Okay. So it's still pretty pricey, even expensive. with a lot of yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but it worked. And which one were you that's using? That's awesome. Uh, pr- pr- uh, predominantly Viagra. I did start using and was real happy with uh, the low dose Cialis, just because of the spontaneity right. aspect so of it. Right. So you were taking it daily uh, there, right. and I, I find yeah, most so patients I, enjoy that a little bit more, especially with their yep. if they're in a relationship that they see their partner every day. If you're with someone yep. who you know you see your girl every two weeks or something. Those guys are probably better off taking the Viagra, but you're right. The spontaneity right. was probably so much better for you and your partner, right? Well, yep. Yeah, and so, you know, it, you know, taking that, and if I, you know, if, hey, you know what, hey, uh, the wife's in the mood tonight, so maybe it was I popped a second one or chewed a second right. one, you know, beforehand to, to get it going and, and, and to, to really get things started. But, uh, you know, I was happy with that. Uh, for a while there, you know, and I, this is a take this as a, a word of warning. I never had any necessarily negative effects with it, but you can get bombarded with uh, cheap generic uh, substitutes, and it's all from China. You know, the stuff coming over from China, and that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, most of it's drywall char- chalk. Damn. Um, uh, well. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a good point. No, little, it's a good point because you know. We're in a day and age, though, where the generics are cheap and very reasonably priced. But there was a point right. where people wanted to save money, right. and they would do their online research, 
They would buy right. it internationally. There's no guarantees yep. that that shit's going to work or no guarantees it's, it's anything or, safe. Or what's your take? Yeah, right. exactly. What's your take? You have no idea what your take. So, right. You know, but as, 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 it's legit, but... I, as, as a PSA to our listeners, though, as a PSA to our listeners, if you're getting a generic nowadays from the pharmacy, the commercial pharmacies, they're yeah. probably pretty reliable, and also they should not cost you a lot of money. There are so many different resources now to Absolutely. be able to get you a good quantities of these medications for you know it's pretty cheap prices cheap. compared to. It you know, is ridiculously cheap now. So there's you know the discount pharmacy cards or whatnot. Yes. Uh, I mean, you can get you. I can if I wanted to buy it now, I could buy. 30 pills for what I was paying for five. That's crazy. Wow. That's 10 crazy. years wow. ago. Puts I mean, it's absolutely it's affordable. You don't need to go to the you know online type stuff. There's plenty of resources. So just save your time, money, and your, and, and your, your effort. So. Yeah. so, you know, the oral meds work for you for a while. And for a lot of guys, you know, this is the end all be all. They, they get a good erection. Mm-hmm. They're, they're happy with the oral meds. But as Kevin and I both know, that's not always the case, especially for someone who has diabetes type 1. And, and later on, it's, sometimes it's harder to control. You know, there is progression of disease potentially. And we do see this in diabetics. We see this in, uh, you know, other, other heart disease patients. We see these kinds of things. And sometimes the oral pill isn't enough. And so tell us what happened, how long you were on the pill, and, and what happened after that. Um, I want to say I was probably on, you know, oral meds were working for me for seven to probably seven years or so. That's pretty great. Uh, yeah, you know, I and my health improved. I was working, you know, when I was 45, I was probably in some of the best shape of my life just because of the workout regimen that I was doing. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, then I had another major accident um, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> had to have uh, some pretty serious surgery that really set me back as far as my ability to exercise and this sorry and that. that. Um, and started, you know, I, you know, climbing back out of that as far as a um, from a health level aspect. But the the, the oral meds just. They just weren't cutting it, and and it, there's a consistency aspect where well maybe this time it works and it only but it only works forty percent, uh, and maybe that's the ceiling is sixty per forty to sixty right. percent is the ceiling. Well, that's you know for for guys you want a nice rock hard throbbing cock. And, Absolutely, and, and you right. want to rock your partner's that, world, yeah. and you're not doing it with a push and rope kind of right. situation. Exactly. So. <laughs> Um, uh, I discovered, uh, I, I seen something about injections, um, and did a little looking at that and discovered Trimix, uh, injections, which give you, when you get it dialed in, um, they can get that, they, they can restore your sexual function to what you were when you were 18. Um, oh, yeah. and they work, they work, they work, they work. Um, so, Jack, let me, let me. I want you to take a pause right there. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I want you to kind of just describe for our listeners, because you know, Justin and I have a lot of patients, and like, what's going through your head? Because like, every guy is going like, I don't want to stick a needle in my dick. I just don't yeah. want to. So, like, were you having this thought process? Oh, where yeah. you're like, oh, you know. Oh yeah, and you know, I there's a uh, there's an alternative. Uh, uh, a gel of some sort that you can inject in your urethra yeah. to, uh, that's a trimix that I tried that at, to avoid the needle uh, and to be honest with you it was worse than the needle once oh, really? I did the needle oh, yeah. some people find it painful I, I, yeah some people get cramping in their legs and stuff like that with the, right. with I, the I really did not that, that for me did not and it didn't work it just didn't really it, it, it wasn't near as effective um the the idea of it is it's flat out scary yeah yeah i have absolutely no desire to for fun to just do that but once i realized that well if i'm going to have some fun uh it's a price to pay right what one of the things that really 
helped is this auto injector uh, deal, mm-hmm. auto injector. I forget what the what the brand name is on them. Doesn't matter, but that once again, once you get adjusted and dialed in right, essentially pain free. That's um, important it, for people to know. I mean, it's good. So, I mean, it. Tell, me, tell, us, tell us about doing it. Yeah. It's. I mean, it is as it's it's quick. You you like it's. Uh, trying to think. How of, far? Uh, how far? Put. Like so, you're saying I want to have sex. At what point are you doing it? How does it feel? Before. And then you know, is your partner watching? Are they not watching? Did you care if they watched? It's an important yeah. question. Ab- important question. Absolutely. So, um, my wife never watched. She never had any desire to watch. She knew what I was doing. Uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes is really all the lead time. Don't even really need that if you don't have it. Um, depends on, I mean, uh, you know, you, you know, your partner's going to want some, some foreplay and, and some lead up. So, uh, it was, it, it's a quick, easy prep. It's, and as a diabetic, I'm used to giving myself a shot, just not the dick, but you know, so it's same process, uh, alcohol swab, find your location, make sure you're dodging any veins and, and any showing, you know, Important. that, um, and alternating sides so keeping track of which side you're going on and, and not in the exact same spot every time it's it's like ripping a band-aid off it's one of those things where man you push that thing up against up against the you know the side of your shaft and even you know from the first time to the hundredth time it's always this anxiety stricken okay i'm going to press this trigger and this mm-hmm. needle's going to plunge in there and i would say that God, I can't think of any one time where I was like, okay, that really hurt bad. Right. Um, it's That's good. like that. It's done. Um, you get, ra- you get hard, hard, man. You get rock hard with that thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you, and the, there's the latency period. I mean, so if there is one, if you lose your erection, it's right back. If you want another one, um, it's, Man, I, I, I thought it was the best thing ever. I'm like, I was in heaven. This is the greatest thing ever. That's um, awesome. I, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I, I thought all my prayers were answered. Um, That's awesome. Uh, a lot of a lot of patients come to me. It, it, they're they're a bit apprehensive. They're like, well, you know, like, can I still be spontaneous with this? You know, what would you tell them, Jack? You can be um, now. If it's if you're out on a date with a one night stand hookup, is that going to be an awkward situation? You're trying to hide a needle and you need to keep you know at least try and mix. You need to keep cold. Yeah. Um, so traveling with it can be a challenge. Um, you know, if you're going on vacation somewhere that you know if you're going camping or something, it could be a challenge. Um, so right. there there's some logistical challenges to it. Um, but if you're in a, in a relationship and, and, and with a partner that knows what you're dealing with and is understanding with that and supportive of that, uh, there's, it, it's no, I, it's no I, different, I, it's no I different than going in and taking a look before you jump into bed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I just do want to take a quick step back just to explain to our listeners who may not know what Trimex is. It's actually a mm. injectable and we call it ICI intracavernosal injections it's a comp we call it trimix because it's three things it's alprostadil <clears throat> excuse me alprostadil papaverine and um fentolamine and these are three things that you in combination inject into your penis they dilate the the vessels and allow blood flow and uh, an erection the difference is when you when you're comparing this medication to say cialis or viagra cialis and viagra you need to be stimulated or aroused to actually get the erection for this medication it's going to give you an erection pretty much no matter what once you inject it in it bypasses your brain and it goes and you're injecting directly into your penis so you're going to get the erection and that's the whole point of like like jack said 10 15 minutes max and you're you're good to go because you know 
obviously you're probably in the right mental frame, but but the, the injection is going to override any of those other anxieties that you may have. Um, so yeah, it's I mean these these meds just basically are just telling your penis blood flow now and getting hard, you know. Um, but look, there, there 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 can be some downsides with Trimix. Did you have any issues with Trimix at all? Any bad effects? Uh, not directly from the Trimix. Um, it's okay. Uh, suspect as to having caused a secondary condition to the ED. Um, and if you're ready to get into that, we can start talking yeah, about that. We can go that. into it. We can get into no. it. No. Um, it's, I, I mean, I know Jack, we kind of talked about it a little yeah. bit before we started, you know, recording, but, you know, please share your story and like, yeah. you know, what happened after the trimix so or the injections. Probably a year or so after, uh, I had started using them, uh, and really suddenly out of the blue, uh, you know, I, I did a, I, I did an injection and, and crawled in bed and man this this hurts why is it what the what the hell why this is new um you know and uh i take a look and i've got a about a 30 degree left hand turn about halfway down shaft my penis uh and what the hell is that where did that come from and uh wasn't did not see that coming especially how quickly it, it it developed um and you know did a little bit of research on my own and uh, peyronie's disease um you know calcification uh scar tissue type of a deal on the on the on the one side causing it so when it uh when when it gets erect it turns to the left because that's that part of the the penis is no longer flexible or malleable or whatever term you want to put to it so it turns in that direction yeah, so I mean, listen, Peroni's disease is actually is definitely underreported, as Kevin and Kevin also knows. You know, the thing with Peroni's disease is the development of a plaque uh, in what we call the tunica albuginea of your penis. So if you think about your penis actually as uh, you know a kid's balloon that you blow up, like a, that they can make a poodle doll out of. Um, mm-hmm. When you blow that up, is when you get an erection. Um, and that tube is the albuginia that you are keeping the blood inside your penis. Now, think about then taking a piece of duct tape, which would be the plaque, the thickened scarred plaque, and slapping it onto the balloon and then blowing it up again. What's going to happen is that that tape is not going to allow that part of the balloon to expand as much. And what's going to happen? It's going to cheat over to the left and it's going to curve to the direction of that. And that's basically what's going on with Peroni's disease. Now, Kevin, what do we know about what the causes of Peroni's disease? Uh, that's a great question because all the guys who come in, they all, you know, after we kind of explain what's going on, they want to know right. why is it going on. And, you know, it's actually, it's, it's, it's difficult. There, there's a lot of different ways. People don't know the exact way, but, you know, one of the mechanisms could be trauma, like legitimate trauma and that can cause scar tissue to form for some people it could be just micro trauma that occurs over time that's cumulative and after that the scar formation forms uh, it's important to note for you know our listeners you know the curvatures can go anywhere yeah. it can go up towards you it can go to the left it can go to the right and go down i mean justin and i have seen some pretty crazy curvatures, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, I've right, Justin, seen like, like 90 you know. degree, like turning all the way around. There's other things with hinging effects where sometimes it can get right. really skinny or it looks like an hourglass. But, you know, when we're talking about causes, the Trimix, you know, we have a lot of patients on Trimix. And, it, you know, could it have been the reason? Right. I, I, it's, it's possible, possible. right? You're, you're, it, it, it's possible, but, you know... M- Predominantly, we don't see that. Predominantly, right? Predominantly we, don't. we don't see it. And, but, you know, oh, go ahead, Jack. I, I, I think part of the reason why I got associated with the Trimix is with my medical history of this bizarre type 1 adult onset yeah. autoimmune thing yeah. is that they associated said there's a likelihood that your body already has got some kind of haywired reaction to stuff 
that may be what's got us to where we are here. Um, so no, it wasn't a definitive, oh, this caused it. It was, well, you know, you got this bizarre kind of thing going on already. There's a good chance, you know, those micro traumas of, 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 the, of the needle may have contributed to that. So, for sure, for no, sure. Definitely not, definitely not a, a, a solid 100%. No, this caused it. It's definitely a possibility. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, we'll never know. That's the that's the, the no, no, right. most no. likely most of these cases, these guys that come in and go, what the hell is going on? Why did this happen to me? We can't pinpoint. We, we just don't know. Um, right. We don't we, know. And we don't. Exactly. But, but also, we just know that a lot of guys aren't coming in and talking about it. So we don't really know how many people are actually right. have this. I think it's become more popular for, to be treated because of the other inter the, the interventions that we now have. Um, which we'll get into a little bit later. But, you know, I think the first question I have for you is, so you have this erection, it's now angled. How did that impact your sex life? Did it impact your sex life right away? Did it prevent oh, yeah. you from wanting to have sex? Did it give you some kind of, you know, confidence issue at all? Oh, absolutely. It's debilitating. I mean, uh, I know that it's uncomfortable for my wife. Um, you know, I... She's like, yeah, it, it, it clearly doesn't feel the same because it does. It isn't the same. Right. It doesn't it doesn't hit the spots that, you know, it's like, it's just not hit the spots you used to hit. It's not, you know, for me, it's uncomfortable because there's a there's a pain element mm -hmm. to it. Not to mention the psychological aspect of it, of me, right. you know, thinking about it, thinking about her not enjoying as much as it, it just really it can snowball fast. Um, and I'm also afraid to do a try mix. Uh, right, am I going to make go. am I going to make this worse? And uh, really, have, being about sixty percent erect is about as much as I can tolerate, and much as what she can tolerate, because it's otherwise it's this hard left hand turn, um, trying to put a square peg in a round hole. If you want to you know, use that analogy, it just doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It, it don't fit. Um, so it's, it's uncomfortable for everybody involved. Um, and there's a lot of conversation and a lot of, you know, okay, well, uh, there's ways to be intimate without, you know, penis, vagina penetration. And yeah, and there are, there are some amazing experiences or amazing things that, that partners can do to experience that. But, Jack, I think that's a great point. I do, I do think no, that's one uh, of the most important points. Point. And I, and it's just one of those things where a lot of guys specifically picture sex as P and the V. That's it, right? Right, right. And and and, and, that, and and that and that and that. But that's and that's the thing is since you're a kid, since you get you first remember the first time your dick got hard, you realize, and then and then you touched it. And you're like, wow, that, that feels kind of good. <laughs> yeah, um, it does. Yeah. <laughs> no, and then that's all he can. We all just thought. Yeah, about I was that like, one. oh, we're all just there. <laughs> yeah, and then that's all you think about, you know, and, and, and that's what defines sex. That defines pleasure, and pleasure is a wellness aspect in your life. And that's if you sure. don't have that, besides the fact, the you know. To, Quote, banksing and chasing Amy, all any any woman wants, be it mother, senator, or none, is some good deep dicking, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, chasing Amy. So I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It, it, there are those alternatives, but at the end of the day, men, that's a big part of of, right. of, of, of your being and and your ability and 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 your wellness, psychological health, you know, physically all the way around that's just a part of it for sure so was your curvature like you know it, you mentioned it was 30 degrees right when you first kind of noticed it did it did it get worse was over it, time did it remain it, painful it, too um if i if i use trimix if i you know say you know what you know we have a conversation and yeah okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna do a low dose to get good hard enough there's still Right. some discomfort i don't want to call it pain if i were to do the dose that i was doing before absolutely there's pain it hurts okay. it's 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 more than it's more than uncomfortable um gotcha. it is it painful enough for me to avoid having sex no 
you, know, you might be able to, you know, cut my ear off, and I'd still want to. Get I think paid. we. I think most guys, you could cut a lot of body parts off, and and they right. will still yeah, do. Yeah. They will still have sex. I think right. you could probably yeah, cut no, their heads right. off. Let's be honest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's an important point uh, that you bring up, and Kevin Kevin also is bringing it up because a lot of times with Peyronie's disease, there's two phases. There's the active phase, and then it becomes you know a stable right. phase. So the active phase is when your your curvature is kind of in a dynamic state. You know, sometimes it gets worse, sometimes it maintains, sometimes it actually gets better, and this usually takes about a year. And then the pain too can can resolve after about this time. And we want to see it stabilize uh, oftentimes before we decide to do a, a definitive treatment. Um, now, so how long, I guess the question is, how long now did you have these issues and this pain and discomfort before you decided you wanted to see someone like a urologist? And what was, like, how did you go about selecting your urologists? Um, it was actually, I, I acted pretty quick. Once I... Okay. first experienced it and kind of started looking into it okay what the hell is going on here uh a month okay. by the time that's I pretty got, impressive I honestly that's very impressive that's good that's uh, good discovered it and got an appointment um i'm in a small town they have uh physicians that come in from other uh larger towns nearby to our local hospital it's part of our network I just scheduled through there and um, saw a urologist. Um, an underwhelming experience, um, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. Basically, it was walked in, explained what was going on. Um, actually, showed him a photograph. I had snapped, I had done an injection, snapped a photograph. Very smart. Um, so, I could, so I could. So. Yeah, I want it. Any of our listeners who have that, if you're going to see a urologist, do that. Yeah, awesome. right. Can't yeah. hurt, man. I mean, I'm careful we... when I'm flipping through pictures on my phone at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure I've got one's nowhere near there. You can pile it over here in a separate folder. Um, but, you know, I showed him that, did a, you know, a, a, a manual uh, observation of it, just kind of yeah. felt, yeah, there's, there, there's, the, there's the plaque. You know, identified yep. of where the plaque was and then the conversation instantly went to well because you're di diabetic you've got ed and you've got peyronies uh you need a penile prosthesis which i hadn't really heard of i hadn't gotten that deep in the weeds on any of this mm -hmm. to why expression okay. was a excuse me a fucking what right no that's uh, uh, I, I, that's a pretty reasonable response i would say i i they, these things exist. Can I get a big one? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> it, I legitimately asked that. Legitimately asked that. He said, "If that was the case, then I could, I'd be a millionaire and live in Hollywood and be doing this all the time." Man. But, but that was, but that was the end of the conversation. Completely overwhelmed, and it was, you know what? My my secretary will check your insurance and we'll get you on the schedule, and then have a nice day. And my head's spinning. I'm completely, I mean, I am floored. Uh, what is this? And so, again, immediately started doing some of my own research. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of, for lack of, to steal your name, I manned up and I actually called one of my best friends from college who is a surgical nurse. Um, and I'm like, hey, man, I got to talk to you you know this is what's going on and this is what this guy said what the heck you know and after the good-natured ribbing that you would expect from somebody you've known for 30 years uh, you know it, you know he's like you know what these things are actually pretty slick um you know they're like a reebok pump thing but they're using a saline solution and uh you know they're fairly you know it's it's a it's an invasive surgery, but it's not heart surgery. It's it's pretty quick. It's it's not that big of a deal. Um, then the jackass sends me some freaking TikTok video of a uh, penis Ooh. being de uh, and it's an illustration of a penis being degloved to have some rods or something put into it. I still 
That's oh, on TikTok. Man, I'm not. See, it's, this is this is. I don't. Was, I don't like some of these things. It didn't. You've touched this, Justin's this nerve here. Yeah, Justin, it was. It was some. It was an illustration, and it, and. I still, I, I'm well, right. I'm still willing to drive eight hours to go kick him in the nuts for sending it to me because I based. I okay. You just told me I'm not doing this now. More research. Okay, that's not how this goes in. This is not how this prosthesis right. works. You know. This is um, why I have a problem with all this stuff because you know, I mean, obviously he was fucking around with you, but some right. people see that and they don't know. They don't know, okay. right? Like, and yeah. you know, you're talking about a guy's dick. You're talking about their penis. We've mm -hmm. already established this is their livelihood. Guys will chop off their arms for their penis to work. There's no question about it. Right. But when you yep. see something like that, and I'm also sorry to hear about your experience with a doctor. Listen, I'm not going to talk badly about any doctor, but there, but you know, obviously there are unfortunate experiences that people have. And I think what you're going to tell us next, we know you go to someone else. And, and yep. I think the important thing is, you know, as we go into this is like, you got to get your, you, obviously you, you did the right thing. You reached out to other people to get more information, people that you trusted, and then you're going to go seek another opinion. Um, it's, it's okay to do your own research, but I also think the more important thing is to, you got to find a doctor that you truly trust and that communicates well with you. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't right. work in a way that you feel comfortable, it's okay to go talk to another doctor. That, that can yep. at least explain something or give you a, a, a good, better vibe or whatever it is. You know, this is your health. You should be comfortable as the patient. You're putting, you're trusting yourself, your health, in this case, your penis in that person's hands. And that's a very, very important. So you have to be comfortable. You don't just do whatever. Okay, so I, so I appreciate that. Uh, Justin, ma Justin makes a great point. Justin makes a great point. It's, it's not like one size fits all. Like, oh, that guy's like, you know, that guy or girl is like the, you know, best surgeon that, you know, if you're feeling wrong vibes with anyone, second opinions, you can go talk to other doctors. You got to find where you're most comfortable with. And I think Justin made a really important point there. Um, but Jack, let's go. Let's continue your story. So, all right. So here, you, your, your buddy just sent you this TikTok video. So you're just like, you know, what the hell, you know, <laughs> but what's next? What, 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 you know, what are you thinking? You know, what do you, what do you well, doing? A lot of conversations with my wife um, about this. Uh, you know, is this this is a permanent thing? Um, this is you know they could cure diabetes the next day, including restoring any lost function or undoing any ill effects the day after surgery. And guess what? I'm screwed. I've got this thing. Right. You're, you're correct. You know, it's permanent. you're correct. Um, so there's that aspect to, to weigh in on it. Um, you know, so a lot of conversation with her, a lot of research about, okay, where are the best surgeons with the most experience? Who's really a specialist in this? Um, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to take my car to uh, a tire shop to have the transmission rebuilt if that's all they do is tires i want to right. take it to somebody mm. okay they know what they, they've done a few of these at least yeah, you know so they're not looking at the instruction manual while my they got my dick in their hand <laughs> um <laughs> so did a lot of that i'm fortunate to have where i'm at i'm literally between two very highly skilled facilities uh with some very very uh, reputable surgeons um, and was able to get an appointment night and day different conversation great um, unrushed very empathetic um, it was not at all transactional the first one felt very transactional let's get you on the schedule let's you know gotcha. this was listen you gotta make sure this is the right thing for you we understand totally different experience comfort level through the roof um and came out of that and, and talked to my wife and I, you know, I said i think this is something we need to do you know another another really solid resources there are a lot of i shouldn't say a lot there are some very positive support groups online if you do your research tell us um, yeah because i'm not too familiar well, there, like there's, to... there's a, a peroni's support group uh, it's the i think it's peroni support on reddit um that once you get past every 
swinging dick out there. I think they're just looking for an opportunity to put a picture of their dick online. <laughs> Wait, so you, they are putting their penises <laughs> online on these on these on the Reddit forum? Oh, absolutely. Do I, I did have? I know that. Damn, that's. Oh nice. no, it, it it it's so bad that I put the picture of mine on and said, "Listen, for all of you guys saying, do I have it? This is what it looks like. Wow, your dicks are fine. Okay, wow. dude, you You're rule, fine. man. You rule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of guys thank yous from people that were like, okay, one, thank you for telling them that this is what it looks like. Um, and a few other like, no, thank you, because now I know that this isn't what it, I, I'm okay. Right. I got contacted by a, a, a casting company that does like Dr. Pimple Popper mm -hmm. stuff and wanted to do i'm like no you're not putting me and 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 my junk on tv for everybody to see i'm sorry um i just want to interrupt but, you here because i just <laughs> i just had this revelation that i think is so people are willing to just take dick pics send them online to anonymous people to ask anonymous people if they have baroni's disease before coming to a doctor to talk about it yeah. what does this say about guys what does this say about guys? Like, literally, we got Good so point. many guys putting their own dick pics on Reddit to ask other guys, and they won't come in to make an appointment to talk with me or Kevin about their penises. What are we doing? <laughs> yep, how do we absolutely. fix this? Jack, do you have any recommendations on how we can fix that? Well, hopefully this is part of it. Really, hopefully yeah, this is I <laughs> another avenue to, to help that. Um, and and to and maybe to, to destigmatize a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. They'll they'll put it on there for the world to see before they'll go talk to their doctor wow. that uh, can actually give them a, a better piece of advice. But um, it, to that point, though, there were there are some very kind, very empathetic people on there that have, that have had it, that have gone through different treatments whether it's the Zyaflex and showing okay this is the impact that I that the Zyaflex had for me or you know there's one guy that hey you know what I am so many months past you know post-op um with and they'll say which uh which implant they've got and here this is this is me this is me inflating it that for me was mm. such a big deal yeah. to actually it's one thing to you know maybe see a brochure or see something in the doctor's office this guy's had it done he's about my age maybe a little older showing how this thing works what it it looks perfectly normal it you know it, so and to a person i i instant message some different people asking okay listen tell me about your experience with this and to a person the only regret because that's one okay do you have any regrets yeah big question the only big question important question the only, the only regrets is that they hadn't done it sooner that they they tried all this other mm. stuff they you know they suffered in silence they struggled with this for a long time and the best thing they did the best course of action they took was to get the implant because it just it took care of it, it put it to bed Jack, you highlight like so many of the, you know, stories, it, you know, what patients tell me after we've done the surgery, you know, so many and so many of them say, I wish I had done it earlier, but I get it. You know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. You know, you're, you're putting in a foreign device into your penis. This is a big deal. So I don't fault that at all that, you know, guys are nervous about moving forward with it. Um, but I think really highlighting that other side, though, where guys are like, look, I wish I would have done it earlier. You know, it's, you know, finding that bridge and, you know, seeing that, you know, look, it, a lot of guys, a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, and afterwards. I think the other thing is that not everyone is, surgery is not actually the best candidate, best option for some guys, right? That's true. We talked about you have erectile dysfunction. Other guys may have good erections, but the curvature is just so bad. And, and we do offer the things you You're mentioned, right. like Xyaflex, which is basically a collagenase, and that basically breaks down and chews up that plaque mm -hmm. that can help us potentially correct the curvature. You know, it doesn't work in everyone, 
No, but it, it does help a good portion of guys. And, and you know, and um, it is a very promising procedure that, you know, we do in injections, you're not doing surgery. And, you know, we have a lot of patients that are very happy with that. Um, there's also uh, excision and grafting, a peronesic incision and grafting. There's the, the other surgeries where we're cutting that plaque. Um, without putting an implant, you can do it with an implant. So there's, like anything, like we talked about with erectile dysfunction, there's a whole, you know, set of things that we can do to make sure. It's nuanced care. Yeah. Nuanced well, care, it's, right? It's personalized. Like, it, there's, there's nuance to it. We, we, yeah, exactly. Just like just said, we, we sit down, we'll talk about it. There's, there's no, like, one algorithm way that we do this, you know? In certain situations, there may be something that we may say, like, hey, look, we're going to recommend. We think this is might be a better outcome for you. But it really, you know, you know, we, we try to sit down and understand, you know, where you're at, where your current situation is at, and kind of take it from there to kind of personalize the care. And so. it sounds like that's what your doctor, the second doctor, did for you. And it seemed like, Absolutely. Well, well, we know them. We're not going to say their name, but they are fantastic uh, Kevin and I are they're our right. friend and they're they're great. Um, so I guess at this point you're, you're going to go through with it. Um, we know you haven't gotten it yet, but you are scheduled to get it. So, you know, it's been a long journey for you, man. And so, like, how are you feeling yeah. now that you made the decision? You've got a date, Anya. So what's going through your mind at this point? Because, you know, it's been years. It's been a long journey of you know you talking about your health you talking about your erections you talking about your penis which you know guys we talk about our penises all the time with all of our bros but this is the one chance or the one time we really don't like to although i will tell right. you i don't know if it's because i'm a urologist kevin's a urologist guys tell us all the time about all of their problems <laughs> but that's probably just because of who we are but so yeah. how are how are you feeling yeah. at this point um well, to kind of to your point, there's other than my wife, there are only two other people in the world that are that know me personally that that know I'm going through this. Um, that I felt like, okay, one, they've got a good enough sense of humor that I and I trust them. Uh, that they, when I'm told, give me shit, I'm, I'll take it. I need it. I need to be able to laugh about this. Right. Uh, and 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 I can and do with the with the with those individuals um and uh, but there's a yeah there's a ton of anxiety around it i mean yeah. it's surgery this i'm not getting a yeah. filling um not getting a tat i'm not getting a tattoo uh this is this is surgery and as great as urologists are as as well trained shit happens too um, we, we are human. That's a fact. Um, but you know, you know, common I'm, things being common. You're you're in excellent hands. It's a low risk surgery. But obviously, yeah. I understand. I understand. I'm just trying yeah, to you know, give I'm, you a I'm, reassurance. I'm, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm diabetic, so there's a chance of infection. Correct. It's a mechanical device. Mechanical devices fail. Um, you know, I understand these have tenish years. On average, about 70, 80 percent of them last about ten years. You know, right. so I'm having to consider that, well, before I'm 60, there's the potential that I may have to go through this again. Um, you know, it, and then there's just the aspect of, okay, I'm going to go in for surgery to have a penile implant. And how do I tell my boss that I need time off? That's um, a great point. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Well, but, you know, yeah. I, I think that... You bring up a good point there, but you also, you know, and you also, you talked about you had this conversation with your partner, which is also amazing. And I think that's an important part of this. But I will tell you, and Kevin knows this as well, there has been many times where guys, you know, they either don't have a partner, a steady partner, or, you know, they live with their, their you know, families of like their kids and stuff as they're older. And they tell us to literally say that they're getting a hernia surgery or something yep. like that and, that's what's been recommended and, too. and you yeah. know as guys as your doctor we understand the sensitivity of this i got no problem telling someone yep. you had a hernia surgery writing a note for your hernia surgery something like that you know and i'm sure that's probably what you're going to do something like that yep 
that's how I intend to do it. So, so um, you know, we, we I, understand. I don't, that. I personally don't know that he what he's. I personally don't think they're going to want the details. Honestly, um, it's none of their business. At the end of the day, it's yeah. none of their business. You, you, no, this is your health. You got to get what you got to get done, and they shouldn't inquire. I, the only thing they're going to say is, "Hope you're feeling better," and that's all they yep, need to know. You know, yep. and that's really all they need to know. Yep. Um, I don't know, Kev. Uh, you know, I, I think you've answered everything. I mean, you are just the man, Jack. You're the absolute man. You're Fucking a rock star rock for coming star. out here and sharing. I think all the your final question really us. is like, what final word of advice for this whole thing? If you had one thing or two things that you you wanted to give guys advice on or tell them, because you've gone through a lot, and I think a lot of guys out there listening to this can absolutely relate to erectile dysfunction, prone disease, they either have one, the other, right. or both. Um, right. how, what do you tell these guys? What is something that they need to know or, or should know? So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, almost a corny phrase, but people talk about, you know, sexual health is, is, is health. It's, yeah. it's part of your well being. sexual health, sexual wellness is wellness. Um, and if you've got, if you're having chest pains, you're going to a cardiologist. If your foot hurts, you're going to a podiatrist. Um, it, if your dick ain't working, go see a urologist. Yeah, you fucking you, nailed it, dude. This is good. Go. I never used that one before. I like it. <laughs> uh, it just, it's, but I get it. It's not easy. It's, you know, it, it's not an easy thing to 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 admit. It, it's it. You know, it's a it's a vulnerability that you have to expose right. um, that you don't want to, but in the end, it's really the only way you're going to be well. Uh, it's it's the safest, best way to get the best care. You know, you can urologist. You know, however many years and how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt you are, uh, you've got the knowledge and the experience. There's nothing you haven't seen, I'm sure. Um, so you're not good. There's nothing to be embarrassed of. They're not going to walk. You know, it's not like you walk. You know, you walk out of the the exam room and you guys are going to put it up on the billboard that Jack was just in here because his dick doesn't. Everybody <laughs> exactly. here exactly like. We'll just and picture honestly, it as no, no one cares anyway because you're the thousandth right. guy that we just did this right. week. Right, <laughs> right. So just doggone it, just just do it. And you know, and really, it, you kind of touched on it before too. Is that uh, your lifestyle um, overall uh, is a huge impact with this as well? I mean, it's easy for me to say. I, I'm not a smoker. Uh, you know, I very casually, very rarely drink. Um, probably should drink more. But um, uh, <laughs> people are actually shocked I don't. Um, but um, uh, your lifestyle has a, a huge impact and, and bearing on this aspect of your health more than you maybe even realize. And it's, it's worth taking care of and worth examining uh, you know, do you really want to have another pack of cigarettes if you mean you can't have sex the way you want to have sex? You know, that's a decision. Uh, you're right. You know, a lot of things you can't, you don't have erectile dysfunction until you do. And you don't have high, high glucose sugars until you do. And then when you right. do, you can't see it until right. it's too late. So, you know, these, the, it's the same thing. It's all the same, right? And your weight, if you want to be efficient with your time, if you want to be efficient with your happiness and and just getting to where you want to go it's pretty simple you just give us a call you go see us and, and we can we can fix this problem i mean uh, yep. we've been right. a, you've been treated by doctors for the last few years and you know what things change and that's okay but guess what we can respond ap appropriately and we can find another way to do things the worst thing you could do is you could say oh shit i took the viagra see how it's I guess that's it for me, and you just, just say yep. adios, and that's it. And that's not that's not helping yourself. And you know, you can take all the pictures of your penis online for your curvature, but that's still not some guy, other guy online saying you do or do have don't have parodies <laughs> is not going to get you that treatment that you want. So 
You right. know, I think the best right. thing you do right. is come see me, and I'll tell you right away if you got Veronis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown away by that. I love. I mean, that's crazy. I love that. I actually love that because that's dudes. That's guys. It's so, so representative. Guys. Though. That's exactly guys. Right. It's representative. Oh, of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, Jack. So thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate this. This was awesome. No. Obviously, we'll no. be yeah, in man. touch, and maybe we could talk about the process afterwards. Yes. Yeah. At some Absolutely. point. Absolutely. I'd, 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 I'd. Good luck. Thank you. With I'd be willing to do that too. So just let me know and. Awesome. Uh, All right, so we're going to sign out here. So thanks to everyone for listening. As always, you can listen to all of our podcasts on any podcasting platform, iTunes, Spotify. You can download, subscribe, give us a review, five stars, always appreciated. Um, You can check us out on our website as well. Kev, what's the website? It's www.themanapod.com. Awesome. You can follow us on all social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter at the Man Up Pod. Um, you can also follow Kevin or I, Kevin Chu MD, Justin Dubin MD on all social media platforms. Easy, same thing as well. For for Kevin and Jack, thanks for listening. Until next time, have a good one. <laughs>